today we got four big stories. OpenAI and Microsoft are at war. And then moving on to an actual war, US eyes a potential ban on the export of AI chips. Uh, New York Times' battle with Perplexity AI. And then NVIDIA co-founder looking to build an AI army. His words, not mine. All right, so the first story of the day, uh, the U.S. government is reportedly considering capping the sale of NVIDIA and AMD AI chips to certain Persian Gulf countries, including the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia, to address national security concerns. If they go through with it, these new restrictions will be similar to those U.S. government imposed on the export of advanced AI chips uh, from the likes of NVIDIA and AMD and related equipment to China. Nothing new here. Uh, the Western world is just trying to limit the amount of AI chips that are going to other countries uh, that are not allies, so to speak. I'm not sure to what end. Have you guys seen the AI that China is creating? There was, I remember, I think it's called Kling AI. I think it's called Kling. Opening AI was like messing around with AI uh, video creation and so were other companies. And then Kling released their version and it was so f bananas. Like it was insane, the quality of it. Like, look at this, this is, this is Kling AI. Like, look at this. This is insane. When they released these videos, people were like, holy f Like we are so behind. Look at this. This is crazy. And they have so much, uh, I I think it's Kling. I guess, don't quote me on this, but I think this is the one. So when they released this, so essentially the US is putting in their effort to try to stop kind of this AI development in other countries that they're competing with. Uh, the US and its allies, Netherlands, Germany, South Korea, and Japan have been strengthening the restriction on access to AI hardware. In China, as US AI chips give them a key advantage on the global AI stage, I honestly don't, look, the, le the less you can export technology to China and give them a chance to rip you off, the better, but they're still gonna find their ways to get their hands on it and rip you off anyway. So um, this is a catch 22, I don't think this honestly means anything. All right, next, uh, OpenAI and Microsoft at war. Uh, although it was once called the most elite bromance in tech, cracks in the five-year partnership between OpenAI and Microsoft are reportedly starting to show as OpenAI faces increasing monetary pressures. They're expected to drop $5 billion this year. Da -da -da -da. Interviews with 19 people across both companies reveal that tensions started after Sam Altman, and OpenAI's CEO was fired, then rehired, which apparently shocked and concerned Microsoft CTO. CEO Sasha Nadella. This whole thing is super weird because Microsoft was like one of the big, big investors, besides Elon Musk. Elon Musk was one of the few original investors. And then Microsoft came in to become one of the big companies to invest in OpenAI. And then they stole Sam Altman away. Uh, OpenAI staff, you know, pooped their pants and Sam Altman came back. So it's this whole relationship is weird. They're also the biggest investor in the latest funding round. The last funding round was led by, I think it was Thrive Capital. I did a video on this. Uh, that was a Kushner, Kushner's brother, Josh Kushner's company. Uh, also Microsoft was an investor, SoftBank. I'm missing one, but yeah, this is, this is a weird, super weird relationship. Uh, it says, although much of this is speculation at this stage, after all, Microsoft did participate in OpenAI's most recent funding round. That's what I just said. Uh, so I guess uh, there's a lot of agreement, but Microsoft's also trying to build their own AI with like Azuri and you know that costs a lot of money monthly. So it's weird. They're like kind of competing, but OpenAI was kind of part of their ecosystem. It's a super bizarre story, but one to keep an eye on. Uh, drinking on a Sunday. So the next story is, I've talked about this a lot in other videos, New York Times uh, having the track record of suing a lot of AI companies for copyright infringement. Um, nothing out of the ordinary here, except they found themselves a new dance partner in Perplexity AI. The New York Times, a, vo a venerable 
the fuck does that even mean? A venerable institution in the world of journalism has been at the forefront of legal blah, 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 blah. Um, has been at the forefront of legal battles against AI companies that allegedly use its content without authorization. The latest target of its ire is perplexity. So this is an AI startup backed by Jeff Bezos. Now, what's the connection with Jeff Bezos? Jeff Bezos uh, found funding Perplexity. He also co-owns the Washington Post, if I'm not mistaken, at this point. And the New York Times is suing them. So maybe that's a kind of like a New York Times, uh, Washington Post kind of beef. You know, there's always, there's always weird stuff going on behind the scenes. The New York Times cease and desist letter dated October 2nd accuses Perplexity of using its content to generate summaries and other outputs, thereby violating copyright law. Now, this is, you know, murky waters. Copyright law has not been developed with AI in mind. So this is going to be a super, super hard sell. Uh, Perplexity, on the other hand, contends that it is not scraping the data for building foundation models. Okay, so this is this is important but rather it's indexing web pages and surfacing factual content as citations to inform responses when users ask questions. Okay, so there's two things at work here, right? Uh, New York Times doesn't like that its content is being used at all. The New York Times is basically saying, these are our journalists, they are professionals, they've spent hours and hours and hours on their craft creating these articles, you shouldn't be using it at all. They're basically alleging that Perplexity is making money off that. Perplexity and other AI companies are saying, we're not using your data to train AI models, which is first of all bullshit, they are. But let's take them at face value. If they say, we are not using your information to, to train new AI models, it's kind of answering a question that was never asked. The New York Times is just is simply saying, you guys are doing something with our content. You guys are using our content for some kind of enrichment on your side. Doesn't matter what it is. So the crux of the legal dispute lies in the interpretation of copyright law and the concept of fair use. The New York Times argues that perplexity's use of its content is unauthorized and constitutes copyright infringement. The newspaper asserts that it's expressive, carefully written, and research journalism is being used without license, resulting in an unjust enrichment for perplexity and their business par partners. So they're basically saying, in any way that perplexity is using our content, they're getting richer off it, which w whether it means more people utilizing the platform, uh, more people subscribing to the paid version, that's essentially what they're saying. Whereas the AI argument is saying, hey, we're not, you know, we're, we're claiming we're not training AI models, whatever. So this is gonna be an ongoing case. I'll probably be speaking on it later. So the final story of the day, NVIDIA looks to expand on human output by the use of AI determined to scale up employee count to 50,000 as well. So what they want to do is have a firm of 50,000 deploying 100 million AI assistants. So essentially a bunch of AI assistants that are going to be doing kind of, I guess, menial tasks. Um, he didn't mention much. When discussing the progressive, the progression of AI infrastructure in the future, Jensen claimed, Jensen is the CEO of NVIDIA, uh, stated that NVIDIA is prepared, preparing to build a huge arsenal of AI assistants which will target a company's rather redundant and less priority tasks, making employees working experience much more efficient and easier. So that's kind of the angle there. That's, I could think, a general consensus. I think if AI can take your job, um, on some levels, it wasn't that difficult. I will argue there are many exceptions. I, I say that, um, if you're an artist, I think AI will soon be able to take over that. Uh, and that doesn't mean that your job was menial. So there are a lot of exceptions to what I just said, but um, that's what NVIDIA is saying. Are we gonna see like robot employees? That's my question. Are people gonna have robot employee uh, co-workers like sitting at the cubicle next to them? That'd be kind of cool. All right, well. That's the end of the video. I uh, hope you guys liked it. Please like, share, follow, subscribe. I'm trying to build this thing. I'm trying to get some AI news to you if you like it. Even if you don't, leave a comment. Talk shit. Till next time.